right, people, we've made it to Wednesday, hump day of the number one form for Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine Game Week. We are three days. We are Calvin Ridley, Trent Richardson, three days away from Bama, Miami, taking place on Saturday, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, 2.30 p.m. Central Time kickoff, ABC. We'll have the call on the matchup. We're coming to you live from the Magic City of Birmingham, streaming to you the show on YouTube. Speaking of the channel, go ahead right now, drop a thumbs up, give a like on the show, hit that subscribe button, turn all of those notifications on, hit that bell so that way you can have all of your news, notes, alerts, and coverage on your favorite program. That being the Crimson Tide people, we got a lot to get into, a lot to discuss on today. We got two outstanding guests. We're going to have former Alabama running back Derek Lassick on the show, the MVP of the 1993 Sugar Bowl between Alabama and Miami for the national championship. It's going to be awesome to speak with him. And then we got my man Alex Barth, who covers the New England Patriots for 98.5, the Sports Hub, with an update there on Mac Jones as he as he was named the starting quarterback QB1 for the Patriots on yesterday. So a lot to talk about, a lot to get into. We want you guys being a part of the show. Ring those phone lines. You can do that by calling 205-448-1358. That's the number to call in to let your voice be heard. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you. As always, the Daily Super Chat Go, $75. Daily Super Chat Go. Appreciate the love from all of you of the Thai Nation. Guys, shout out my man John Ivory in the production studio one time doing his thing. And also uh, everybody here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine continuing to send our condolences and our prayers to everybody that's been affected by Hurricane Ida. Absolutely. But as we now jump into topic number one here of the conversation. We've got the big matchups between Alabama and Miami. Everything's about matchups. What's the best matchup on the field? What's the most intriguing matchup? Who has the edge in these different uh, situations, if you will? And, uh, you know, Coach Saban is 10-0 all time in marquee season openers, 6-0 against SEC team, against ACC teams, excuse me, trying to go out the win number seven against Miami, but we go now to the first major matchup here, and that's going to be Alabama's defensive front against Miami's offensive line. This is going to be a big situation here because when you look at Miami, Miami returns all five of its starters from a season ago. Uh, the Hurricanes, this is a group that, you know, 190 career starts. That's a college football record. This is a veteran group, an experienced group. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They don't make a lot of errors. They do their assignment, and they follow their assignment. This is an offensive line that helped De'Ara King total 27 touchdowns a season ago, 23 passing, four rushing, as well as helping running back Cameron Harris rush for 10 scores. So this is also a Miami team, offensive line, that helped the team average 34 points per game a season ago. But as we look at Alabama's defensive line here, this is going to be huge for the defensive, defensive front because of the fact that for Bama, it's going to be how do we frustrate this offensive line? How does Alabama get this offensive line playing off, get this offensive line frustrated, get this group not playing uh, at its crisp peak power? And on top of that, being able to get to the Eric King, put him on the ground, rough him up a bit, frustrate him, create some negative plays, some turnovers, because the young man is coming off an ACL injury that he suffered in the bowl game. And you never know how healthy you are until you get hit. So you look at a Bama team that you've got Will Anderson and Christopher Allen that combined for 13 sacks a season ago. You have a Bama defense that multiple guys on, are on preseason award watching this. And this is also a Bama defense that forced 22 turnovers a season ago across the front. But as we, as we get into now the, uh, the, the challenge rating, the challenge rating. So the challenge rating here is what we're doing here for each matchup, I'm going to give a challenge rating between the numbers from one to five. One being, you know, it's not going to be that tough of a challenge for Alabama. 
five being it's a huge challenge for Alabama. So that's the challenge rating here for these matchups between the Crimson Tide and the Hurricane. So I'm going to give this challenge rating a five here between Alabama's defensive front and Miami's offensive line. This is a veteran group, an experienced group. Not saying Alabama can't crack the code, get some heat to De'Ara King and cause some friction, but this is a Miami group that is a very veteran group. So challenge, uh, challenge rating there of five. But as we flip this over now to the matchup between Alabama's offensive line and Miami's defensive front, this is an Alabama offensive line of whom, yes, we know it lost three guys to the NFL with Alex Netherwood, Landon Dickerson, and Deontay Brown. But it does return three guys, including two starters in Evan Neal at left tackle, Emil Echior Jr. at right guard. There was a competition at center between Chris Owens and Darian Dalcourt. This is an Alabama offensive line a season ago that helped this team average 48 and a half points per game. This is also a Bama offensive line that produced three Heisman finalists, Mac Jones, Devontae Smith, Najee Harris, and a Heisman winner and one Devontae Smith. But if you look at Miami, Miami's defensive front, 17 and a half sacks returned from last year's group that had 30 of them. And then you've got all of Miami's you know, defensive players that had tackles for loss. You know, those guys are back on the roster as well. And then on top of that, you have Manny Diaz, of whom, uh, if you know Manny Diaz from his days at Texas as an assistant coach, he's known for blitzing. He is going to want to get pressure to Bryce Young. He's going to want to affect the quarterback, collapse the pocket, and uh, you know, get Bryce Young uncomfortable, get Young uneasy, get Young on his heels early and often. So that means this is going to be major here for Evan Neal, major for Kendall Randolph at right tackle, major for everybody on the offensive line, protecting Bryce Young at the point of attack, giving him time to make plays here uh, in the passing game, and then also opening up the holes in the run game. The best way to stop an aggressive defense, you run the football right at them. And you got five, you got four guys here when you talk Brian Robinson, uh, Jace McClellan, uh, Trey Sanders, and also Roy Dale Williams. So being able to affect the aggressive defense of Miami, got to be able to run the football. But the challenge rating for this one, I'm going to go with the four here as the challenge rating. It's still going to be a challenge. I think Alabama's offensive line will be able to hold its own and do very well, very strong there, but still a challenge going up against a Miami group and Manny Diaz that loves to blitz, whether it's up the middle, whether it's stunts, whether it's off the edge, whether it's using a corner or, or a safety off the hot corner, that Miami's going to bring pressure. But So I give this a four, but... I think, Miami's offensive, I think Alabama's offensive line should be able to hold up there. As we move here to the third big matchup here, we've got Alabama's defensive secondary against Miami's wide receivers. Alabama's secondary, everybody's back except for Patrick Sertan II, who's in the NFL now with the Denver Broncos. Everybody else is back. This is the Alabama secondary that uh, had uh, – Three had three interceptions a season ago. Had well, not three interceptions. Had three interceptions returned for touchdowns a season ago, and a fumble return for a score as well. This is also an Alabama secondary that boasts at least two potential first-round picks. When you look at Josh Job, one of the boundary corners, and strong safety. Jordan Battle. So this is a veteran group. This is a veteran secondary under Jay Belias, cornerbacks coach, Charles Kelly, safeties coach. Of course, Nick Saban, the main guy coaching the DBs. But they're going against a receiver room in Miami. They've got talent now. Mike Harley and Brevin Jordan, they combined for 14 of De'Eric King's 23 touchdown. Well, they caught 14 of De'Eric King's 23 touchdown passes a season ago and then Miami also has Charleston Rambo a speedster whom they brought in from Oklahoma via the transfer portal he's going to get a lot of looks here and then here's the caveat Desalen Worsham an Alabama native went to Hewitt Trustville High School Alabama courted him hard on the recruiting trail he chose Miami so now this is going to be a matchup here. You got Desalen Worsham, you got Malachi Moore, you know, Hewitt Trustville guys going head up, going against each other. This should be a fun matchup between 
the Bama DBs and the wide receivers receiving uh, options there for Miami. The challenge rating here, I'm going to give this a three. I mean, uh, I think it's it's going to be moderately challenging. The thing about it is Miami, outside of Mike Harley at wide receiver, you know, outside of Mike Harley, you know, Brevin Jordan's got size, but, you know, the other guys kind of have to prove themselves at Miami. Charleston Rambo's got experience in Oklahoma, but he's got to prove himself at Miami. DeZalen Worsham, young guy, got to prove himself. They got some other young players that have to prove themselves on the big stage. This is a veteran Alabama secondary in Josh Job and Malachi Moore and DeMarco Hellams and Jordan Battle. You got Brian Branch who's played, who played this past season. You got Jalen Omar Davis of whom probably not a lot of on-field experience, but he knows a lot of the knowledge and the scheme of the system. And, of course, you got Daniel Wright as a backup as well. So, going to give this challenge rating a three. But Alabama-Miami got some big matchups for this game. Uh, going to be fun watching this all unfold. Uh, and that's going to lead us into our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting started. When we return, uh, we go on the phone lines to take your calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your interactions. We get a dialogue going with you for Tide fans after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. What's up, Bama Nation? This is Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman, and you're listening to my guy, Stephen M. Smith, In My Own Words, brought to you by Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Roll! Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. We are back in, folks, with the action from the break on a Wednesday hump day, number one form for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Got a couple of super chats to get to right now. So how about my man Spencer Revely starting us off with that $5 donation, helping us out here on the show. Appreciate Spencer and my man Big Bill. Bill from New York, that $5 donation. From his end, appreciate both of those guys. The Daily Super Chat Go people, $75. Daily Super Chat Go. Appreciate the love from all of you helping us out here on the show. But we go to the phone lines now. Phone lines open. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. Number to call in right there, 205-448-1358. We grab a call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How you feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Mr. Stephen Smith, this is uh, Christian with Ballard Sports Media. It's been quite some time since I called in. I'm ready for the Tide to roll Miami this weekend. Absolutely, my man. Absolutely. I mean, this three days away from the big game. Uh, got a lot of news and notes uh, all around the program. I, I, I'm pumped up, man. I'm pumped up. Yeah, I wanted to say real quick, I wanted to call in. You you, you guys do a great job, obviously, with uh, – all the content y'all put out, you've been talking about it all off season. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to you guys, but I'm, I'm going to say this. I know a lot of people are hyping up uh, all these receivers and everything. And believe me, I get it. And, you know, I get Bryce Young. I'm excited to see Ajay Hall, Jojo Earl, all the new guys stepping up on offense, which has been really the key factor of this program the past few years. As we've, you know, I've kind of noticed we've transitioned to a new, you know, throw the ball deep, score 50 points type of era, not just for Alabama, but college football in general. 
But I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that I think Alabama is more led defensively just with pass rush and not giving up as many points as they have to a couple teams. I mean, we gave up 48 to Ole Miss uh, last season. Of course, we remember LSU in 2019 and in the Iron Bowl. Like, we, we struggled defensively with a lot of young guys. We bring a lot of experience back on that side of the ball, and I think that's going to be the key factor. And, of course, I mean, yeah, a high-scoring offense, but I really think our defense could play a big role this season and where we end up as far as, like, maybe winning back-to-back championships or just making a playoffs or just winning all these football games we have ahead of us. Absolutely, absolutely, Chris. I look at this defense. It's strong. It's nasty. It's mean. It's hungry. And for the last three years, it's been told you've taken a back seat. You're not. You have not held the standard that guys before you have done. And this group is ready to get after it. Starting with Miami, my man Chris. We appreciate the call right there. You helping us out on the show, my man Chris Ballard, Sports Media, showing us some love right there. We're gonna transition here to a quick topic, and that topic is Nick Saban updated some injuries today in the SEC coaches teleconference. LeBron Ray and the offensive tackle Kendall Randolph will both be available for Miami. They will both play. They will both be suited up. LeBron Ray coming off a groin surgery. Kendall Randolph, who sustained a minor ankle sprain in the first scrimmage, but both guys, according to Saban today, will suit up, will play, will be available available for Miami. That is awesome there. That is fantastic. We go to we got, we got a shout out to Super Chat here. I think we got Super Chat Super Chat in here. So we got a shout out to my man McConnick. My man McConnick with that $65 donation. Appreciate the love from him. And then Jimmy Clay. Jimmy Cashman, bad man Clay with that $25 donation helping us out here on the show. So the daily Super Chat goal of $75 has been met. Appreciate Bill from New York. My man Spencer Redley, McConnick, and Jimmy Clay for all of for all callers in the queue right now, hold on. Just hold on for about 10 minutes. We will get back to you. We'll take a break right now. When we get back, we have our two awesome guests coming on. You're listening to In My Own Words. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Back in here, folks, from the break of a number one forum for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. We go to the In My Own Words hotline right now. We pick up our first of two heavy hitters. When I'm telling you, this guy, heavy, heavy hitter, one of the best running backs to ever wear the crimson and white. I'm talking about the MVP of the 1993 Sugar Bowl for the national championship. He scored two rushing touchdowns in that game. Give it up for my man, Derek Prime, Tom Lassick. Derek, man, welcome in, brother. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Man, I, I'm doing having- great, brother. I, I am doing great, even better now that you're in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you uh, gave me the opportunity to be on your spotlight. Absolutely. So, Derek, I mean, this is a big weekend here for Alabama. You're taking on Miami for the first time since you guys did it in the 1992 season, the 93 Sugar Bowl matchup. You guys getting that 34-13 to win over Gino Toretta and those Canes in Louisiana. But – off, to start this off defensively here, the last few years, you know, Alabama defense hasn't really been at that standard that people, especially Bama fans, want it to be at, you as well as a former player. But with this defense back here and the experience back and the veteran leadership on this team, what are you expecting to see? What do you want to see from this defense against Miami? You know, I'd like to see dominance like it was back in the old days. But with the offense and its evolution, I, I don't think it, we're going to be as dominant as we were back in the day where we kept teams to 10 points and things of that nature. 
But I feel this defense, long gone are those days where teams are going to score 30-something points on our defense. You mean our defensive front is very deep. Uh, we don't have a lot of big names. You know, our linebacking core and uh, uh, backfield, they have some pretty good guys that are going to be first-round picks. <clears throat> of course, we have, you know, the guy coming off the end there, but he's only a sophomore. He'll eventually be a first-round pick. So, so I'm looking for, you know, the defense to, to keep the points total into the 17, 20-point range, and, and that's a lot of points for them to give up in a game. So as we flip this thing here, Derek, to the offense, if you're just tuning in to the show here, we got my man Derek Nassick on the phone line, former Alabama running back, 1992 national champion. He was the MVP of a 93 Sugar Bowl against Miami. So, Derek, offensively here, you're a running back. Alabama's got a bunch of backs on the roster led by Brian, uh, Brian Robinson. But new offensive coordinator in the Bill O'Brien, what are you expecting to see offensively, especially after what we were spoiled by last year? Well, you know, this year it's a little different. We got young guys at the quarterback position. We have a lot of young receivers. We have Messi coming back. You know, we have the young fella that transferred from uh, Ohio State, Williams, but he hasn't played in our system yet. So, you know, with the line being experienced, I'm expecting us to lean on the running game uh, up more this year and for the running game to open up our pass game a little more than it did last year. Like last year, we, we led with the pass because, you know, hey, we had some guys out there on the island that can do some marvelous things. And then we had Najee, who you had to watch out for him coming out of the backfield. I want to see offensively who's the guy who's going to step up as far as the receivers go. Is it going to be Messi? Is it going to be some of those younger guys that were already at Alabama? Or is it going to be some of the freshmen? Uh, uh, in the backfield, I want to see if they're going to have a bell cow in, in Robinson or they're going to have it, you know, back by committee. Um, you can't go wrong. I mean, we got three five-star running backs, you know, on a depth chart. You know, that that's unheard of, you know. So offensively, I, I, I look for us to be explosive, but in a different way, if, if you understand what I mean. More uh, play action, passing, setting it up instead of, you know, just – five wides and tossing it down the field. Absolutely. We got Derek Nassik here on the phone lines joining us, former Alabama running back, 1992 national champion, MVP of the 1993 Sugar Bowl. But, uh, Derek, just the game that you played in, the game that you played in, uh, two rushing touchdowns. I mean, Miami came in talking a lot of junk in the 93 Sugar Bowl. You guys came in, set the tone, wiped them completely out of the building. How did Coach Stallings get y'all prepared for that matchup, or was it just y'all coming in saying, they talking smack, let's just shut them up? Yeah, he didn't have to do much to get us prepared because we constantly heard from everybody how Miami was going to win the game. We were getting no respect. So, you know, we're saying, hey, we're going to show everybody. Let's go out there. Offensively, we watched film of their defense, and we saw some things that Pitt did that we felt we can do even better because we were a better team than Pitt. And we knew if we could control the clock, don't turn the ball over offensively, we would win the game. We, we, we expected them to score a little more points because, you know, Florida had some success, so we thought they were going to copycat some of the stuff that Florida did. But the game plan that Coach Oliver put in, it was just phenomenal. And, and, and after the first two or three series, Gino Toretta did not want to play against that defense. So he was just heaving the ball up as fast as he can throw it because Copeland, Curry, those guys were coming off the edges. Uh, Jeremy Nunley, man, they, they played a heck of a ball game that, that day, and Miami did not want any, any of it. Absolutely, folks. He is Derek Lassick, former Alabama running back, 1992 national champion, MVP of the 93 Sugar Bowl against Miami. Two rushing touchdowns for my man, graciously, joining us live here on the show. Derek, as always, man, I, man, we appreciate you for coming in, for giving us a moment of your time here to talk Bama, Miami. You take care of yourself, my brother. Stay safe. Be good, man. Man, anytime, Steve. Roll Tide. Absolutely. Derek Lassick, former Alabama running back, helping us out here on the show, getting us ready for Miami. But now we transition to the other heavy hitter, my man Alex Barth 
who covers the New England Patriots, a beat reporter, sports radio personality for 98.5, the Sports Hub. Alex, big news happened yesterday. You and I are going to get into it. But first off, my man, how you feeling? I'm good. I mean, you got me following a national champion. That's, that's kind of tough, but I'm doing good. Absolutely. So, Alex, I mean, uh, it, the news happened yesterday. It happened early in the morning. The New England Patriots said, you know what? We love you, Cam, but we're going with Mac Jones. We're going with the kid as the starting quarterback, especially with the way he's performed since being drafted back in April. My first thought to you, Alex, is at what point in your mind did you kind of sense that Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels we're going to roll with Mac Jones. Was it some point in the preseason? Was it some point in the joint practices? But just at what point did you feel like they're going to go with the rookie? So there was that window last week where Cam Newton missed time due to the NFL's COVID protocols. And Mac Jones had two amazing practices, one of them in a joint practice. It was the best he looked in his time in New England. And at that point, I'm like, all right, you know, he's the better guy. But I, I still truly thought they would stick with Cam Newton just because of how much they believe in in experience and how much they value experience. And that was the one area Mac Jones was never going to catch Cam Newton was experience. Cam's been in the league for 10 years. But Mac, you know, you go back and you look at some of those practices and, and I think back to it now, just how good Mac Jones was, that probably should have tipped it because down the stretch, he clearly outplayed Cam Newton. And, again, it, it came down to, all right, well, will they overlook his inexperience? And clearly they're willing to. If you're just tuning into the show, we got my man Alex Barth on the phone line covering the New England Patriots for 98.5, the Sports Hub, beat writer for the team, and sports radio personality. So, Alex, week one of the season, we got a treat here. You got Mac Jones versus Tua Tungavangoa, Patriots-Dolphins, week one, out the gate matchup. What are you looking forward to seeing from Mac as he goes up against his old teammate from Bama in Tua? So it's a fun one for Alabama fans, right? Um, I'm looking for I, – I, I just kind of want to see his command at the line of scrimmage. I want to see truly how much he's mastered the offense because he he looks like, and by all accounts from people inside the organization, he, he has this down. He has the playbook down as much as you could expect a rookie to have it down, but we haven't really seen it, right? Teams don't really run their playbook in the preseason. They run a modified version because they don't want to show their hand. Well – you know, here we go. Now he's going to be fully given the keys to the Patriots offense. And I think the reason that they drafted him, I think the reason he's succeeded so much, I think the reason he's the starter is because his skill set is perfectly tailored to what the Patriots want to do. And it's not that I don't believe that's true, but, you know, that's kind of something we've been hearing and we've been saying for uh, almost six months now. And it's, you know, I'm kind of excited to just see it put into practice and see it in reality instead of just talking about it in the abstract. Alex, were you surprised uh, at all by Coach Belichick giving this glowing review of Mac in the press conferences after uh, Jones being named the starter? Because normally it's like pulling teeth getting Belichick to show praise because he, he's tough-minded. He doesn't like to talk a lot. He doesn't like to give as much praise or as much adoration toward, toward anybody. So when you see the head coach like Belichick dove, uh, dive into these praises of Mac Jones, did it surprise you at all? Well, I, I think it kind of speaks to what Mac Jones did this summer, right? Again, I don't know that the plan initially was to start him week one. He came in and he took the job and he grabbed it and he won it. And he wasn't going to do that without earning overwhelming respect from Bill Belichick. I don't think he could come in and, and put together a, a performance that Belichick simply approved of and win the starting job. I think he had to blow Belichick away to win the starting job. And that's what he did. Absolutely. He is Alex Barth, ladies and gentlemen, covering the – New England Patriots sports, uh, well, beat reporter, sports radio personality, 98.5, the sports hub out of Boston. Talking Mac Jones, the big news from yesterday. Mac named the starting quarterback for the Patriots. Alex, as always, man, I appreciate you coming on, helping us out here, giving us the news and the love from the Patriots. You, you, you take care of yourself, my man. Be good. Stay safe out there. You too. Enjoy the game this weekend.
Absolutely. Derek Nastic, Alex Barth, man, we're getting the guest on the show rocking and rolling. But we're going to take a break right now because when we get back, we're going back to you in those phone lines, taking your calls, your thoughts, your conversations, your tweets, your opinions, your interactions coming next right after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit weownthefourthquarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. This is Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly, Test Now Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw the foes up, but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We are back into the action, folks, on the number one form for your Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith. Touchdown, Alabama Magazine on a Wednesday hump day. We are three days, baby. Three days until Bama, Miami, Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 2.30 p.m. Central Time kickoff. ABC will have the call. That's we're back in here. Phone lines open as we get to the call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. That's the number right there to call, 205-448-1358. We grab a call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? State your name and where you calling from. Hey, Stephen. This is Corey from Trustful. How are you doing this afternoon? Doing great, Corey. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on how we – how do you think we match up against De'Ara King? Because I think that's going to be one of the keys of winning the game is limiting De'Ara King as best as possible. And also, do you have some inside information of who won the starting center job? Well, right now, at the starting center job, Corey, it's still a battle between uh, Chris Owens and Darian Dalcourt. I feel like Saban will play both guys. He'll probably rotate them in by quarters. And whoever gives the offense the most confidence and plays the most consistently will win that job between Owens and Dalcourt. But I think Saban will play both. In terms of keys to handle De'Ara King, I think – Alabama's going to have to corral him. You're going to have to have a spy on him, now, whether, that's Chris, whether that's Christian Harris, whether that's Henry To'o To'o. you got to have a spy on King when he tries to break contain of the pocket and run. But if you can spy King, corral him, keep him in the pocket, as well as still get pressure on him, still create some sacks, create some turnovers, but definitely not allow him to break contain of the pocket, I think that's the best way to go there. But we appreciate Corey from Trustville. With that call, we take our next call of the evening. You're live on the show. What's going on? State your name and where you're calling from. Hey, man, my name is Carl. Calling from Miami. Road tie, baby, road tie. We got Carl. We got Carl from the 305. What's going on, man? <laughs> I'm here to give you a report on the feeling down in Miami, man. I'm going to tell you, Stephen, man, these folks are scared to death down here. They pretty much ready to perfect the game. Most of them just say, as long as we don't, they just don't want to get blown out, you know. If they lose by 10, I mean, they pretty much, you got a couple of dreamers, but most of them, they know what's coming. So they're putting on a brave face before the slaughter, you know what I'm saying? I feel you, Carl. I, I, I feel you because this is a Bama defense there. And I've said this before. You want to motivate a group of 18 to 22-year-olds, you tell them, 
you have not met the standard of the guys before you. You want to talk about some guys that will foam at the mouth and be ready to prove themselves? This Alabama defense is ready to prove itself. Well, I got my Alabama gear. I got my shoes. I got my hair. I'm ready to rock and roll and roll tie, baby. But I'm telling you, these Miami people, man, they scared. They just don't want to get embarrassed. They say as Miami can lose by 10, that would be good. But they know pretty much know they're not going to win. My man Carl, coming at, calling in from Miami 305. Appreciate that call there coming from my man Carl right there on the show. We take our next call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? State your name and where you calling from. Hello, Steve and Bill from New York. What's up? My man Bill, what's happening, my man? You know, first thing I want to do is thank you so much for providing, like, this forum for us. Because let's face it, we're a bunch of nuts. We're a bunch of fanatics, and we need a place to go. Now, let me get into the game. You know, what I do before games, I like to think what I would do if I was the coach of the opposing team, you know. And if I was the coach of Miami, I would try to run the ball. Specifically, I'd try to run up the middle. Thing is, that, that's going to kill time. So what I want us to do is I want us to have, like, some quick scores, some scores on defense, which I'm, I really think is going to happen, you know. I think we're going to score on defense. And, you know, if they want to really try and pass on us, we're going to put, we're going to, we might even put people in the hospital. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't hope that happens, but it wouldn't surprise me. So anyway, man, I'm proud to be a Tide fan, you know, and I'm proud to be, a, you know, a participant on this show. And God bless everybody, you know. Appreciate my man Bill, man. Appreciate Bill for that call right there. I mean, uh, I would like to see Alabama get a couple of defensive scores in this game, absolutely. I would like to see Alabama get a special team score, one or two special team scores in this game as well. But we'll see how this kind of happens on the field on Saturday. We go to our next call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How you feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Charles Charles from Demopolis. We got Charles from Demopolis. What's going on, man? Uh, nothing. What's on your mind, Charles? Uh, what what the score uh, for the uh, for the game gonna be? What the score for the first game gonna be? So I got Charles. I got forty two to thirteen, Bama. That, that that was mine. Forty two to thirteen. I might keep it right there. It may change by game time, but right now I'm feeling cool with 42, thir- 42 to thirteen, Alabama. That mean uh, that mean we're gonna win the national championship. I think Bama's going to win the national championship this year, Charles. I, I think Bama won the national championship. Oh, okay. Okay. Appreciate my man Charles from Demopolis, man, calling in. I I, I always want to know what time the game is, what moment the game is. Is Bama going to win the game? So, got to love Charles, man, calling in, helping us out here on the show. As always, 205-448-1358. But I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. We got a super chat that just pulled in here. My man, Big Bill again. Bill from New York with that $5 donation. Appreciate the love there coming from Bill. But we're going to go to, we're going to switch to a quick topic right here. And that is Nick Saban is really turning Alabama into quarterback U. Uh, so, So long for the whole game manager thing when you talk Bama quarterbacks. Because this season, the Crimson Tide will have three starting signal callers in the NFL when you talk to a tongue of Angola with the Dolphins, but also Mac Jones being named the starter for the Patriots, and Jalen Hurts is the starter for the Philadelphia Eagles. Nick Sirianni stopped playing with people, and he named Jalen Hurts as the starter. The young man grinding like the rent do, and he got that rent paid getting that starting job for the guys in Philly. So, uh, Coach Saban, people know him as wide receiver you, running back you, defensive players you, but offensive line you. But now, now Nick going after that quarterback you. I mean, I know the Oklahoma Sooners, they got some Heisman winners over there at the quarterback position. But Nick Saban going, you know what? Y'all can have your Heisman winners. We got three brothers in the NFL. I mean, top that right there. But we're going to take a call right here. 
You're live on the show. What's going on? How you feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Hey, it's Devon from the, from the Washington, D.C. area. How you doing, Steven? My man Devon from D.C. What's happening, brother? I'm hanging in there. Can't wait till Saturday, man. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. <laughs> so, uh, I I, I want to see, uh, you know, I just want to see Brian Robson in the lead ball carrier role. I know they're going to rotate guys and get other guys like Jace McClellan and, and I'm pretty sure Trey Sanders will get some touches. But I want to see, uh, does Brian Robinson, you know, how he is in the lead role. He's been a very good backup to Najee for the last couple of seasons. And uh, I just want to see how he handles being, the, you know, the main guy. Because I think uh, that's where it's going to really make Bryce more comfortable, having that consistent churning running game and how the offensive line gels and opens up holes so that, that makes the, the passing game a little easier for Bryce. You know, we know he's super talented. I mean, you don't play at modern day and play it against the best competition in, in the nation and not be ready to do this. But, you know, it's still a learning curve. and He has to come out there and play to what he knows and does what they ask. But having a strong running game that we always have will definitely help him, you know, become more comfortable a lot quicker. You think so? I believe it, Devon. I believe it 100% and looking forward to seeing Brian Robinson myself. The Tuscaloosa man has been patient. He's waited his time. He's earned this moment and this opportunity. And I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, Robinson tote the ball. I mean, like you mentioned, Bama's going to rotate guys behind him, but I'm happy to see B-Rob tote this rock this season starting off with Miami. But we take a break right here, folks, on the show. Don't touch that dial. When we get back, we're going to get into a little JoJo Earl conversation. He has been the talk from fall camp to this point right now, and he can do a lot of things on the field. How will Bill O'Brien go about using Mr. Earl? We'll discuss it after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies when you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection. Go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, back in here from the break, here on the number one forum for Bama football news. In my own words, with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Before we jump into JoJo Earl, the freshman, got to remind you of TDAWare.com. That's TDAWare.com. So for all of you Bama fans still overjoyed with the Crimson Tides National Championship, we want you to check out our championship collection merch. This means you grab you an 18 of them things, folk hoodie t-shirt or sweatshirt as well as our got 18 we do shirts designs that feature all 18 championship years on the back you head on over to tdawear.com do it right now tdawear.com you go to the championship collections merch tab you get you that gear today show them that support for coach saban university of alabama the student athletes and us here at touchdown alabama magazine but jojo earl time i mean this guy has come in here to, to the university and has snapped in fall camp. We're talking about a brother that he flipped from LSU to Alabama late in the twenty, late in the early signing period for 2021. We're talking about December of last year. He flipped to the Crimson Tide, and people are like, "Oh, okay, cool." JoJo Earl flipped to Alabama, nice. And then you go watch the take, tape, and you're like, "Holy smoke! That's what Bama got." This is the guy that flipped from LSU? This is Jalen Waddle right here. Holy crap. Wow. This is what Bama didn't inherit it? So th when people watched the tape, I mean, they were just blown away by it. And uh, he was not an early enrollee. Christian Leary, Ja'Cory Brooks, uh, Jaye Hall were the early enrollees. But JoJo Earl came in in June. Jo uh, Earl came in in the summer. 
and from summer workouts throughout fall camp, this is the guy that has been popping, that has been snapping, that has been dominating, that has been going off the most. I mean, had touchdown receptions in scrimmages. Coach Saban's been talking about, you know, consistent route runner, consistent hands, unbelievable speed, you know, incredible athlete, incredible player. He juggled football and track at Alito High School in Texas. And he's the starting punt returner for Alabama. He's also the co-starter in the slot position at receiver for uh, right next to Slade Bolden. Now, What's interesting here is about Earl. If you watch his tape, he's got Jalen Waddle's height, but he's got a combination in terms of skill set. He's a little bit of Jalen Waddle. He's a little bit of Percy Harvin, who played at Florida. And he's a little bit of Tavon Austin, who played at West Virginia. He's a little bit, he's a perfect blend combination of three of the best all-purpose players in college football in terms of it doesn't matter where you put this young man on the field, he is going to be a lightning rod. He's going to be special. He's going to be a lightning in a bottle, so to speak. And especially, you know, when you watch the tape there of Earl out of high school, he's catching slant passes. He's catching uh, screen passes. He's catching slant and goals. He's catching post patterns. He's catching deep fades. He's making contested catches. They put him in motion, and they have him as a running back, so he's taking the ball from the quarterback, running up the middle, bouncing plays outside. He's just a terror for defensive players because you, don't, you, you, you can't get near him to tackle him. He eats away the angle. He takes away your angle to get to him and bring him down. And Coach Saban has always been one for, I got to have my best athletes on the field and get them the football. So, Bill O'Brien, the last really shifty type of player that he's had of this caliber, or close to this caliber, I would have to say Will Fuller. Coming when he uh, when he was with the uh, the Houston Texans as head coach, but JoJo Earl has more potential than Will Fuller. JoJo Earl has more of a gear than Will Fuller. JoJo Earl has more of just that get up and go juice than Will Fuller. JoJo Earl may even be a better crafting route runner than Will Fuller. So I mean, um, if, I, if I'm Bill O'Brien, it's how many times or how often or what ways. Can I get this man the ball against Miami? Can, can I have him line up in the backfield and give it to him? Can I go jet sweep? I know when Lane Kiffin was here, Bama fans, y'all hated those jet sweeps. Y'all couldn't stand those pop passes at, the, at, at, uh, at times. But with a player of this dynamic, with a player of this type of element, the jet sweep, the pop pass with JoJo Earl would be really, really cool here to go with because his speed, he can outflank guys, he can out leverage guys, he can outrun guys. Just so dynamic, so quick, so explosive here in space. So if you're Bill O'Brien and you got this type of an athlete against Miami, you got to find how many ways, how many things can this young man do well? How many times can I get him the football? It's going to be awesome to see Earl there on the field. But as always, Tide fans, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage here on your favorite program, that being Bama football. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store, if you got your Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you right here. iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, iHeartRadio. Got you covered right there. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll I'll be back on Friday continuing the coverage that is Bama football. For all of you fans out there, be remember to, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. If you're also trying to get the print edition of TDA the magazine, you go to touchdownalabama.com. You click join. Be a member, a subscriber today. Guys, shout out Donnie Chapel. Donnie Chapel, that $49.99 in the Super Chats. Appreciate that from Donnie Chapel. He's also got the question, what's going on with Billingsley? Saban wants him to be responsible. Saban wants him to be more mature as a player, be more responsible, put the team first, do what you are supposed to do here. Uh, one Whitfield writes in, 
the projected starting offensive line. We appreciate Juan Whitfield for that $50 donation as well, but the projected starting line, Juan, Evan Neal at left tackle, Javion Cohen at left guard, Emil Ekior at right guard, uh, Kendall Randolph at right tackle. There's a battle at center between Chris Owens and Darian Dalcourt. They'll both play against Miami. Whoever gives Bam with a better edge will be the center moving forward between uh, Dalcourt and uh, and Chris Owens. Also, Tide Nation, stick around here for my video on three keys for Alabama to beat Miami. This, th th this live right here will transition you over to the preview. So stay right here, don't go anywhere, stay right here as you will get transitioned in to my three keys preview for Bama to take care of Miami. But as always, Tide fans, uh, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate value. Those husbands, children, continue doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing to not be bored. You get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, good people, I'm your man, Stephen M. Smith. You know what this is. You've been listening to my own words.